the end of another year, right? Not only another year, but 2020. Just when I thought it couldn't get no crazier. Just when I thought it couldn't get no more chaos crammed into one 12-month period. Somebody found a way to do it. And if this don't teach us anything else, it ought to teach us that you can't count on nothing in this world, right? It tells us that there's nothing for sure about this uh, corrupt, cursed world. If you haven't learned anything from 2020, you should at least learn that. In 2019, somewhere about this time, as everybody was getting excited for 2020, I earned me a profit star by warning everybody, don't be so excited about something you don't know anything about because you don't know what it holds. You don't know what it brings. I had no idea I would be so right. But this year, I'm not going to warn you. I don't think you need warning. I think you understand that you ain't got no clue what's in the future now, right? I think we understand that anything could come out of this world, anything. And just when you think it's as chaotic as it can possibly be, somebody blows up something and it just gets ramped up, right? So today, I'm not going to talk to you about the unknowns. So much as I want to talk to you about the fact that no matter what happens, as Christians, we should be the most unaffected people, right? We just celebrated the birth of hope. This is our hope, that Christ is who He says He is. It's our only hope. And if we put our hope in anything besides Him... You see where what's available, right? You've looked at the news lately. It can get plumb sideways on you in a hurry. But as Christians, our hope is not in this world, nor the things or the people of this world. Our hope is in Christ and Christ alone. If you would turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'll put my eyeballs on. <clears throat> and make sure I'm at the right place. Now, in studying this, I was actually headed in a different direction, and when I sat down to take notes and, and put it all together and get it ready for this morning, it all kind of changed a little, so y'all bear with me. If it sounds like I'm preaching two messages, it's because I am. But my goal is to preach them in a timely manner. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 1. We'll read about 10 of these and see how far we get. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked, for while we are still in this tent we groan, being burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that this mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are home or away, we make it our aim to please Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due from what he, what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Let's pray. 
Our Father and our God, we do humble ourselves before you again this morning to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your love. Father, I pray that, you're, 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 would, that you would allow us to see and feel your presence in this place this morning. Father, that we would be uh, busy studying your word and learning and gaining knowledge this morning. And as we do that, Father, I would ask you to just be involved, that you would allow us to walk away from here with understanding. Father, our goal is not to finish. Our goal is to learn and grow and become more a reflection of the image of your glory that you desire for us to be. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, if this body is destroyed, that's, that's the earthly tent Paul's talking about, this, this body, this, this earthly fleshly body, for we know, we as Christians, we as followers of Christ, know and understand that if this body is destroyed, we have a new body waiting on us, right? Absence from this body is presence with the Lord, right? So, the crazy, and I want to preference what I'm about to say with something, and I need you to hear this part really clearly because I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. This pandemic, this virus, um, COVID-19, the Ronus, whatever it is, however it is you refer to it, I by no means am saying I think it don't exist. It's real. It's there. People have died from it. It's serious business. No doubt. I think a lot of the information we get is misconstrued. I don't think we're getting the whole truth. But I do believe it does exist. I do believe a little common sense goes a long way. I think I'm kind of ashamed some of y'all didn't wash your hands before this. It's okay to laugh. It's okay. Good hygiene is always great, whether we're in a pandemic or not. But at the same time, as Christians, we are not called to live in fear of anything. I'm not saying you should act like it don't exist. I'm not saying you should pretend it's not out there. It's real. It's there. It exists. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying this morning. But the most important thing for you and I as Christians, as followers of Christ, is our spiritual well-being. If I haven't learned anything else from 2020, I have learned that iron sharpens iron. And I have learned that that is a very important part of life for Christians, is to be gathered together and surrounded by fellow believers. It's, I mean, it's, I knew it was important, but listen, it took me about two months to get off the rails. Pastor, you hear me? And I couldn't imagine how it was for you all. I got comfortable sitting at the house. I liked it, by the way. Really? Two days and a weekend? Oh, I'm in. Sign me up. Do everything at my leisure and my convenience? Why, sure, I'll take some of that. I enjoyed it, but man, I'm going to tell you something. My spiritual well-being suffered greatly. If I ain't learned nothing else, I've learned what the Bible has said about iron sharpening iron. It takes a long time for iron to sharpen iron. You can take something made out of a different material and sharpen iron faster. You can use diamond. You can use certain stones. You can use glass to sharpen steel. But when you take a piece of steel and start rubbing it on a piece of steel to try to sharpen it, 
It's a long, drawn-out process. It works, but it takes a long time. That's why some of us are still dull. Because <laughs> it takes time to get sharpened back up. So I'm not telling you that I believe this pandemic don't exist. I'm not telling you it's some kind of government hoax. I think it's been blowed out of proportion, and I don't think it's as big, but that, that part of it doesn't matter. What I think of it doesn't matter this morning. What I need you to hear is, no matter what 2021... Are y'all concerned that we're saying 2021? Y'all ain't thought of that yet, have you? Huh? 2020 W-O-N. <laughs> I'm telling you, the stuff that goes through my mind and I get stuck on. Anyway, y'all didn't get it and it's okay. Whatever 2021 brings our way, because we don't know what it'll be, right? Think of all that we've seen the past year. Who knows what's in the next 12 months, but whatever it is, as Christians, we should be the least affected by it. Look at what Paul says right here in 2 Corinthians. We know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's a promise from God. That as a Christian, a follower of Christ, a believer, this world is not all there is to offer. There's more to come after this that is far greater than anything we can imagine or conceive in our minds. So the worst thing this world can do to me is destroy this body. Take my life. So what does that mean for me? Well, as a Christian, the good stuff just arrived. We should be the least affected people. At some point, I have to start ministering to people and encouraging people to come back. If you have to wear a mask to feel safe, by all means, wear a mask. If you have to strap down with gallons of hand sanitizer, by all means, do that. But at some point, we have to start coming to the realization that the most important thing we can do for one another is watch out for their spiritual well-being. Because our churches are getting smaller and smaller. It's taken... Used to, it took a lot to get somebody to miss church. Today, <coughs> I think I need to stay home. Right? It's true. I'm just telling you the truth. It takes nothing to get us to miss church anymore. Nothing. Somebody can mention it. The governor did his thing the other night and whatever he did, and I got a call and I went, listen, I'm over it. <laughs> if five people want to be there, everybody here has been in this thing for going on a year. You know the dangers. You know the risk. I'm going to be here. And if five of you want to be here, come join me. Now, that may change. There, something else could break loose and it get crazy again and, and we have to make a different decision. And we, we're, at, we're literally making these decisions week to week at this point. Literally, having to. But at, right now, that's where I'm at. And this is why. The worst thing that can happen to me is this tent get destroyed. So? So at what point does your spiritual well-being become most important to me? Right now. Right now. Right now. I'm there. I'm, I'm here to tell you that the most important thing, no matter how bad it hurts, no matter... I mean, listen, people have lost loved ones over this junk. I get it. I'm not... Again, I preferenced it by saying, I'm not saying it don't exist and it's not important and it's not real. I'm not saying none of that. But I'm telling you that the mental and the spiritual impact that this past year is going to have on people is far greater than any physical thing that's happened. It is. Y'all, we, we, our loved ones are in nursing homes dying 
without their families and we're sending our, our people in there as employees to watch this process take place. We're sending our nurses and our doctors into hospitals to care for people that they know how to care for and making them stay back don't do that. Like it's some kind of plague. It's not. The mental impact this is having on our people is bad. Think about when you started school. Now, some of y'all, that was a long time ago. And, I, sir, I wasn't looking at you when I said that. I'm sorry. Oh, we always pick on the new guy. I don't know if you were warned of that. Think back to when you started school. And think about the stability that that brought to your life. It was stability, right? You went every day, five days a week, right? Kindergartners were kind of phased in when that started, right? And it was kind of an easy process where you gained a stability in your life. Whether life was good at home or not, that stability was important. You learned how to be on a schedule, right? You learned responsibilities of getting your stuff and getting it there when it's supposed to be there and all that kind of stuff. That's been ripped from our children. They can go to school today and find out they ain't going again for six months or six weeks or six days. The stability that all that brought has been pulled from them. Our society is going to suffer from this. Listen, you and I as Christians at some point have to come to the realization that all the stuff that we depend on in this world, is in the, it's, it's not worth being dependent on it. It's not stable enough to depend on it's been pulled out from under us. The only stability in this life is the Word of God and the promises that it brings to us. Our faith is based on these promises. And He just promised me that if this body is destroyed, I have a better body waiting on me that's not built with the hands of man, right? So we can't go because here's what's happening and I see it going on. People are, are easing into this New Year thing like this, real slow, trying not to touch nothing, trying not to say nothing because they don't know what's about to happen, right? It's almost it's scary to an extent. Used to, it was an exciting time. Used to, we celebrated and we, I heard a person say multiple times the other night, I'm not going to stay up to see the new and in. I'm going to stay up and make sure the old one left, <laughs> right? That's the new mentality. But listen to me, as Christians, does it matter? If we mean what we say, it doesn't matter. Now that doesn't mean you throw caution to the wind and go out here and be rogue and rebel against it. I'm not saying that. Don't hear that. But I'm saying deep down, at some point, as Christians, we got to come to the realization the worst thing this world can do is take our life. But for Christians, that's when life begins. <laughs> and, and if we don't get that mindset back, again, our churches are shrinking. They're getting smaller and smaller, fewer and fewer. Some of them aren't going to be there when this is all over with. Remember how sad it is to drive through these communities and see that at one time each community was self-sustaining and had its own little grocery store and its own little church and its own little... And all of those are just empty built. We're fixing to see more and more of that as far as the churches are concerned. If we don't start really believing in the promises God has made. Let's keep reading through this and see if we can find some other things. In chapter, verse 2, chapter 5, For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. Anybody know what Paul means when he talks about in this body we groan? <laughs> Any of you ever experienced the pain and agony of this body? Have any of you gotten old enough yet to figure out that with time this thing's deteriorating? Like, you know, used to, the alarm went off, you, your feet went so far in the air, it kicked the covers off, you landed on it, slapped the alarm on your way by to brush your teeth and put your clothes on, 
And now all of a sudden the alarm goes off and you go, oh, and you roll and toss and turn and you finally get to the edge of the bed and about the third song that's playing on the radio through the alarm, you're over there to turn it off. That's, that's the truth at my house. <laughs> you know why? Because this body is deteriorating. It's a part of the curse of this world. It's true for every one of us. The older you get, the more realization you'll find in that. There were some things that what I used to think was old people told me, that the older I get, the more true they become, Stevie. I used to always hear, the older you get, the faster time goes. <laughs> if it gets any faster, <laughs> right? I feel like I'm stepping now from month to month. <laughs> Why? Because we're living in a curse. It's, a, it's, it's what it is. It's a curse. Everything here is cur it's going away. It's, it's going away. Every day it's going away. Why are we surprised by it? We shouldn't be. It's part of the curse. Look at this. So we groan in this body, longing to put on, desiring to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we may be not found naked. Uh, for while we are still in this tent, we groan being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. What is mortal is being swallowed up by life. Everything that's mortal is being... The process is going and you can't stop it. So why would we have any hope in this world? The things of this world, if everything here is being swallowed up by life, by time, it's all going away. Yet we hold it so dear, right? Right? We desire it so much. Yet we're being told that every day it's going away. It's constantly and consistently going away. This is what I was talking about when I asked God's presence to be here, right? Everything floating around. And, right? It's all moving around. We shouldn't be surprised by the fact that this cursed world is not dependable. We shouldn't be caught off guard by the fact that we don't know what tomorrow brings. We really don't. Again, <clears throat> five years ago, yesterday, the 26th of December, I went to preach my grandmother's funeral and brought home a nine-year-old. I had a conversation on the way out the door with Amanda, and I said, we're going to go down there, and I'm going to preach this funeral, and there's a little girl that lived down there that can't go back to where she came from. And Amanda said, yeah, that's, that's right. Are you okay if I bring her home with us? She said, yeah, I'd be great with it. I said, no, I ain't talking about for the weekend. I ain't talking about bringing her back home for a few weeks. I'm talking about we're going Monday and get a lawyer, and we're going to be her parents for real. She said, yeah, I'm good with it. So that's what we did. We went to the funeral home. I preached the funeral. I went to her mom and I said, what's your plans for Montana? And she went, hmm. I said, okay, let me ask it in a less intelligent way. Can you take care of her? She said, no, not really. I said, I can. Can I take her home? She said, yeah, I think that'd be good for her. I said, I ain't talking about for the weekend. I'm talking about I'm going Monday and get a lawyer. I'm going to put my name on her birth certificate. She said, yeah, I'm good with it. So we came home with her. Do you think going into Christmas 2015 that a nine-year-old was on my list? No. I, didn't, I had no idea what was coming. Not a clue. Not a clue. We don't know what tomorrow brings. Sometimes it's a blessing, right? And we, 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 we want that, 
Sometimes it's not a blessing. Sometimes it's a pandemic. <laughs> Sometimes it's a virus. Sometimes it's a, a motorhome with a bomb in it. I mean, ain't nothing out of the realm of possibilities at this point, right? But listen, the inconsistencies of this world should not take you by surprise. It's cursed. It's cursed. We're dealing with evil, imperfect beings. So why, should, why could we possibly be surprised? Our hope isn't in the things of this world. As Christians, we should be the least affected by what 2021 brings. Our stability isn't dependent on this world and our environment. It's dependent on the promises of God. It's dependent on the fact that Christ is our hope. And if our hope is in Him and Him... Listen, He hasn't varied over the last 12 months. He's still exactly who He was when 2019 went out. That's, that's the kind of foundation we need. That's the kind of stability we need. And it's available. So what happens? How do, how do we get here? How do we get to the point where our, our, we're depending on things other than Christ? Did I unplug something? Oh, for heaven's sake. Ugh. Y'all don't laugh. I make those noises not voluntar voluntarily. Good catch, Tommy Lee. Good catch. I thought you was going down on us. I thought we was going to have an example right here. You went to waving for help and stuff. Right, right. I didn't know what was going on. Here we go, verse 6. This is where it turns around and goes the other way. Right, right. I thought his body done got to groaning. Right. I know that's true. I know that's true. Verse 6, So we are always of good courage. Now I skipped some th a little something on purpose here. So we are always of good courage. We've been learning as we, as we study our Bible how to study it and the importance of context and the importance of keeping everything tied together and paying attention to the verbiage and all these things. What I just read you starts with the word so. So what? Well, we have to back up to see. Let's do that. Verse 5. He who has prepared us for this very thing, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So you have a guarantee. The guarantee that God is who He says He is, that Christ is who He says He is, and that your hope can't be in this world. The guarantee that God's promises are real is the presence of the Spirit in your life as a Christian. Now look at this. So, that being said, right? Understanding that you have the guarantee of the Spirit. Look at here. We are of good courage. Because we have that guarantee. Because God is who He says He is. Christ is who He says He is. The Son of God. They did what they said they would do. And there is a place prepared for me. Knowing that, I can be of good courage. Now, does that mean I should go out here and live like none of the rest of this junk don't exist? No, that'd be silly. Because God gave you something else called common sense. Now, I know in today's world it's more of a superpower. Right, it's hard to find. If you have common sense, you should be wearing a cape. Because you have a superpower. But if we'll apply that superpower of common sense... We will figure out that we don't just ignore all of this stuff. We don't just act like it don't exist and just throw caution to the wind and, and just do... We still have to pay attention to what's going on. But listen, our hope's not rooted in what's going on and whether or not it pans out. Our hope is not in... The, our hope is in God doing exactly... And listen, He gave you a guarantee so you can be courageous as you do so. Right? So we are of good courage. 
We don't fear the things of this world. Keep going. That gets mentioned again. What have I told you about things that are repeated? They're important. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Look at this, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. How many of you can honestly say you've ever really walked by faith? You know what it means to walk by faith? It means that you don't make your decisions based on what's going on around you. That you don't look at the storm that's raging around you and decide what you need to do. You walk by faith. You read the Word of God, you trust the Word of God, and you make your decisions based on guarantees and promises from the Word of God. That's walking by faith. Walking by sight is, let's see what happens. <laughs> I got bad news. <laughs> it ain't no telling what's going to happen. I mean, at some point yesterday, uh, Christmas Day, there was, for a lot of people, no communication. No way to access their checking accounts. Some places were accepting cash only and they didn't have none. You feel vulnerable yet? <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting you go put all your cash in mason jars and bury them in the backyard. But I am saying one or two wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> you never know. The thing I depend on the most, listen... I can remember when I got my first cell phone, I remember it. When cell phones first came out, there was two options that I remember. One of them was in a bag called a bag phone. The other one looked like a brick, and it was called a brick phone. It was about yay tall and about yay thick. Had a little antenna. Stick. The military still uses them. That ain't really what they are, but that's what they look like to me. You ain't supposed to say military in church, sorry. So you either had a brick phone or a bag phone. I had a bag phone. I could talk to people going down the road in my 72 Ford pickup truck. My daddy found out I had that thing. And it was not good. He had a complete come apart on me. The last thing you need is to be able to talk on a telephone in a vehicle. There is absolutely no reason for that. That you know better. This is, you get that out of there, you'll get killed. You talk on the phone at home enough. You don't need one in the truck. So that one got removed. Today, if you accidentally walk out the house without your phone, what do you do? The majority, and I ain't saying everybody, some of y'all come to me afterwards, oh, I could live without mine, good for you. But the majority of us cannot function without it. It's our link to everything and everybody, right? It's how we let people know if we need something. It's how people let us know if they need something. It's how we gather information, right? It's our, it's our connection to everything. And when that thing wasn't working for about a day and a half, there was real panic for some folks. Because something that we trusted in, something we depended on, didn't work anymore. Right? Y'all looking at me like I'm the only one. I know better. I know better. Oh, some of y'all got Verizon, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. Y'all stuff still worked. <laughs> but I can tell you for me, it was a kind of a panic. I mean, I can't even get the call from the wood shop that supper's ready. I mean, important stuff like that, right? If I'm down there working and Amanda's got dinner ready, she can't even let me know. How will I ever know? Right? <laughs> <laughs> we had to get us a veil. Go back to get a. We we actually have one. We may start using it. Thankfully, it came back on. I don't have to worry about that. Here we go. For we we are always of good courage. Verse seven. We walk by faith, not by sight. Verse eight. Yes, we are of good care, courage. And look at here. We would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home 
or a way, we make it our aim to please Him. Paul says, actually, I desire to be in the presence of the Lord and out of this body. But whether I'm in this body, at home, away, or I'm at home with the Lord, my aim is the same. You see that? I walk by faith, not by sight, and my aim never changes to please God. We should be the least affected people on this earth by what happens in the coming year. We should be. Because our hope's not in the things of this world. Our foundation isn't based on anything in this world. Our only aim is to please God, and we need to be doing that regardless of what's going on. Right? We need to be clinging to His promises, right? Now, now these words aren't for everybody. You understand that, right? These are for Christians. These are for God's people. These are for followers of Christ, believers of Christ. This is for the church. Because unbelievers have nothing to be courageous about. If you can't claim these promises, I'm sorry, but you should live in fear. <laughs> because we go on to find out that the reason it's our aim to please God is that everybody's going to stand before Him in judgment. And we're going to receive what's due for what was done in this body, whether it be good or bad. So as a non-believer, as, as, as a non-Christian, you have nothing to be courageous about. You have no hope. Except, let's finish reading this. I want to take you somewhere else. <clears throat> Verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Drop down to verse 16. From now on, therefore, and, and you'd have to read 11 through 15 to know the, the therefore part of this, but it doesn't change the meaning of the verses. We regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard Him thus no longer. Therefore, here we go, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Right? The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. In other words, you don't have to face the coming year out of fear. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't desire a modified version of 2020 in 2021. In other words, I don't want it to just I want it to be a new year. Right? A fresh start. Old things have passed. That's the kind of new beginning we get in Christ. Is we don't become a modified version of the old me. It's a new creation, right? Old things have passed. They're done away with. They're gone. It's newness. It's a new outlook on life. It's a newness of courage, right? It's a newness of forgiveness. It's a new way of looking at life. It's a new way of treating people. It's a new set of desires. It's all new. And that's where this courage comes from, is the guarantee of the Spirit. So listen, if you are a Christian, and you are a follower of Christ, the worst thing that can happen to you in this world is that you get separated from this body and joined with the Lord. Therefore, you can be courageous because of the guarantee of the Spirit, Right? You can be courageous as we face 2021. But good news, for those of you who haven't made that decision yet, you don't have to stay where you are. You can face 2021 with that same courage and that same guarantee that I'm facing it with. But it's not forced. God doesn't make you. 
As Christians, there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world except snakes that should cause us fear. That's because I'm scared of snakes. That's why I said that, right? <laughs> See, it's easy for me to stand up here and tell you you should just always be of good courage and not have any fear of this stuff. But at the same time, the reality is I have fears of my own, right? Paul referenced, and we studied it in, in uh, Sunday school this morning. Um, it's over on in about chapter 7 is where we was at. Paul makes a statement fighting without on the outside, and fear within. Paul said that, that he had that issue. That on the outside he kept battling and he kept struggling and he kept fighting, but on the inside he had a little fear. See, I'm not standing up here and telling you that to be of good courage means that you have no fears. But what it does mean is that fear does not control you. That fear does not weigh in on your decision making. On the outside, you still trust God and you walk by faith and not sight. Even though on the inside, there's a little fear. And the reason I tell you that and the reason I bring you that up because when I say be of good courage, when you find yourself not, you begin to question who you are and where you stand. And you shouldn't. The reality is we're still wrapped in flesh. We still have that battle going on. Every one of us have that battle going on. You can be of good courage and still have a fear of snakes <laughs> or COVID, right? But that fear can't control you. It can't be what makes your decisions for you. You still got to trust God. You still got to be of good courage and you still got to walk by faith, not by sight. Your surroundings don't determine your decision-making process. I hope I made sense this morning. I hope you understand where I'm, where I'm trying to go, and I hope above anything else that I didn't sound like I'm trying to tell you if this stuff scares you that, that you're not a Christian. I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. I also didn't say that it don't exist and you should just act like it don't exist and just go, I didn't say that at all. Still got to apply some common sense. Still got to have a little common sense about you. But your decisions can't be made out of fear. Your decisions has got to be made out of faith. The worst thing that can happen is this can't get destroyed. Well, that's not the end of the road for us as Christians. It's actually the beginning. 